Okay, so in the vise we've got a Napic size 12 jig style hook. And we've also got a tungsten faceted gold bead. And about a 3 mil size. So, just get our thread started on here. You can see how that that bead kind of sits at a totally different angle because of that that jig style hook. Gives the fly just a very unique, different look. I think a lot of people haven't maybe even haven't seen um, jig style hooks for fly tying but they're becoming more popular and they just tend to make some of the more traditional patterns just look a little different and you can kind of come up with a lot of your own looks for this style of hook so we've got our thread base down now we're just gonna um, for ribbing on this fly we're just gonna use some copper wire so we'll just take a short section of wire, this is the small size and again you can use all different colors of wire here for this fly just gonna kinda stick that right in the in the bead there and just lock that down all the way along the along the hook that way it's very secure and it hasn't really upset any profile that we're going for here right now for the body on this fly we're gonna use a, a turkey quill here so we're just going to pull off one of the, the biots on the side, one of the longer ones. And sometimes these things are kind of dry, so I found that if you just if you just moisten it a little bit, have some water, then it'll uh, be a little bit more pliable. So I'm just going to tie that in by the tip with the curved side facing out. Just grab that little tip a couple soft wraps right there at the end just make sure that's nice and secure and I like to come back here with the thread and maybe just kinda give it a little bit of a taper this thread's pretty small so it takes takes a little time but a bigger thread would be a lot easier that's pretty good and it also helps to uh, just grab these right at the tip here and all we got to do is wind this forward kind of nice they give a nice little segmented body to the fly used a lot on dry flies you'll see them just gives a nice little slim profile doesn't build up the body too much and with the tungsten bead obviously you're going for weight so it also helps the fly sink you know when when you don't have too bulky of a body we don't need to get that all the way up, get that about maybe one or two wraps shy behind the bead. And then you can just tie that off and get rid of our excess. Okay, now we can just come up here with the wire rib. Not only does this strengthen that that body, it just also adds a little bit of little bit of segmentation to the fly evenly wrap that up again leave some space behind the bead and tie off that wire get rid of the excess alright now we're going to just come back just a little bit and we're just going to apply some I've got some ice dubbing here we don't need a whole lot um, just a little wisp of this is the calabatus color and I'm, since I don't need a lot, I'm just going to spin that directly onto the thread. I'm just trying to create a little, a little bump, a little ball of dubbing here. I'm just going to wind that on. Just kind of right on top of itself, create that little, little ball of dubbing. Okay, now I'm going to make some legs just with some, some pheasant tail. Just got the pheasant tail fiber here. So just gonna grab maybe oh I don't know I don't don't really count them up but maybe five or six I just get that together I'm just gonna tie that right on the side right in front of that little ball of dubbing with a few wraps of thread and just kind of pull that pull that to length just just a little legs off to the side there secure that. Move the excess to get it out of the way. And I'm going to come in here on the feather. 
grab a few more, another five or six. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same on each side. And then I'll just do that same technique. Just kind of lash that down to the side. Adjust the angle. And pull it to length to match the other side. And you can hold, hold both of them and then lock those down. Alright. Trim off the excess here. So you can see we've just got a little a little gap here behind the bead. What I like to do with these jig hooks, I, I like to adjust it into the vise so it sits up at a little bit of an angle. It gives me a better shot of filling in this, this area. Now we're going to use some of our wiggle dubbing again. Um, now this has a lot of a little chopped up small spandex type rubber legs into the dubbing. It comes in a bunch of colors. This is the brown. So hopefully you can see that there at the little legs. Rather than use the brush, I'm just going to put it into a dubbing loop and use our dubbing twister tool so you can take a look at that. So I'll just make my dubbing loop here with some thread. Come back behind it. And here's the dubbing spinner tool we got. So we're just going to hook that in, keep that loop open. Just insert our dubbing. And just do a couple of slow, slow turns with that spinner really spins good just to kind of lock it in place and then you can really give it a good spin to just spin that spin that dubbing right up you can see that on the in the dubbing loop there now I'm just gonna kinda come in right behind the bead real tight and then work back towards that little ball of dubbing and then back up behind the bead that way I know that little section is completely filled in. And lock it down with some thread wraps. And then we can get rid of our get rid of our loop there. And we'll just kind of get those fibers out of the way. Get our whip finish taken care of. And again, since the this this hook has a little angle when you do the whip finish, you got to kind of angle it to match that angle of the back of the bead there, but not a big deal. Cinch that down, get rid of that thread. And again, you can come in here with some Velcro or a little dubbing pick brush, old toothbrush, something to just kind of get all these fibers kind of angling backwards. And because the rubber legs, sometimes you'll get some real long ones here. You can you can trim these off. It just depends on how buggy you want the fly to be. Just trim off some of these extra long fibers. Sometimes the legs will get trapped, kind of locked down, but you can just pick those out. So there's the jigger knot. Let me adjust that back. Nice slim body. A little action with that dubbing. The jig hook kind of gives it a very unique profile. And then that little faceted tungsten bead. Alright, tie some up and catch some fish.